So far, we've been investigating statements, as if they're just this thing that I might just utter for fun. We've got the statement and we've been investigating, is it true, is it false? We try to take a statement, break it up into its logical form. But what we really want to be doing is making arguments that persuade us that conclusions are going to be true. So a, a valid argument is going to be this list of statements that we're going to refer to as premises. And then if you accept all of these different premises, then the conclusion logically follows. That's our real goal. We want to be able to prove theorems or we want to argue to somebody why something might be true. We're going to try to come up with a logically valid argument that does this. Now the idea of a, of a logically valid argument is to say that the structure of it is indisputable. That we can not dispute that the conclusion follows from the premises. There might be other ways to go about it. You, you might have many criticisms of the argument for once you might say, well, look, the premise that you told me, it isn't even true. So then the conclusion doesn't follow if the premises aren't even true. But if you've written a valid argument, then everybody should be able to agree that your, your argument is indeed valid in the sense that the conclusion does indeed follow from the premises. So here's a sample argument. I've broken it up into a couple different parts. I say, first of all, if I do the dishes, then my wife will be happy with me. This is just a premise. I'm not saying it's a true premise, not saying it's a false premise, but it's just a, it is a statement and in particular it's a conditional. Then I'm going to click the claim, I do the dishes. And then the conclusion here is that my wife is happy with me. Now, I, I, these, both of these premises may not be true. Maybe I don't do the dishes. Maybe this is way too simplistic of a statement to deduce my wife being happy with me. But the logic of it, I think, is sound. If I have this one thing, if I have this hypothesis, then I get the conclusion. I'm assuming that I do have the hypothesis, therefore I do get the conclusion, and I have this structure. So let's just look at the structure for itself for a moment. Now, now I filled it in with a kind of joke example here. But I could fill in this structure with anything. For example, I could just put P's and Q's in place of these statements. So where I had I do the dishes in both of these two places, I'm going to put it into a P. And when I have my wife will be happy with me, I'm going to replace those with Q's. So this is what we refer to as a logical form or an argument form. And in particular, it's one that's got a name of modus Ponens. Now, modus ponens, yeah, it's a fancy Latin name for it, but what it means is a logical structure of the form, if P then Q, so if an assumption then a conclusion, and then you take that assumption and therefore you get the conclusion. Now, I think that this argument seems relatively reasonable. If you have an assumption, then you get the conclusion, and I assert you do have the assumption, so therefore you do get the conclusion. That seems intuitively reasonable to me. And indeed, I think we use arguments like this all the time in our daily lives, although we may not structure it quite so explicitly. However, let's try to look at the level of truth tables to verify that this argument that intuitively makes a lot of sense actually is indeed valid. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my variables. I'm not going to fill them on myself because we do the same thing every single time. So I have my variables P and Q. So if I go and look at my argument, I've got these three different lines. The first of them I will sometimes call P1 for premise 1. And then the second of the two I will sometimes call P2 for premise 2. And then the third of them I might call C for conclusion. So what I want to do in my truth table is to now put up my two premises. So here we go. We have the P implies Q and the P. So first of all, the P implies Q. We know true, true. This is going to give us a true as well. Then we're going to have true, false, that's going to be false. And then I have these two false down here in the P column, and so we got the vacuously true scenarios. So I can put true, true in there as well. And then I'm sort of just repeating myself. I, I've also put P because P was a premise, but P was also a variable. So I'm, I'm going to kind of just copy and paste this particular column. So it's a little bit tedious, but whatever, that's all right. And I'm doing it in this way just because I, I want to have one sort of block here that's got all of my premises. So even though P, which was a premise, just happened to, by coincidence, be a variable as well, I'm going to put it down in this section over here. So there, I've got my variables, I've got my premises. Final thing I want to write down is my conclusion. 
All right. So my conclusion is going to be Q. And what we're trying to say is that in any scenario where both premises are true, we want the conclusion to be true as well. But if I look at my premises, there's a false here, there's a false here, there's a false there. The only one where both premises are true is this one. And so I care about this row, and in this scenario, true, true, and if I look over at what Q was over here, Q was true as well, so what do I get? I have a true. And then, I actually don't even care to fill in this part at all. It doesn't really matter to me what goes in there, because in this scenario, the premises are not satisfied. In this logical argument, I am assuming that both of my premises are true, and if my premises were not true, I don't care. My argument doesn't matter whether it's valid or not. So all that matters in this scenario is this first row here, just because that's when all of the premises are gonna be true. And what do we have? Indeed, the conclusion is true because it matches the claim over here. The, the variable Q is the same thing as this. So I think yes. I think this is logically valid that modus ponens does indeed work and the intuition is proven by our truth table. Another very famous and important uh, logical argument is, is a form referred to as modus tollens. And this is the statement, it's, it's one premise, if P then Q, a second premise, not Q, and the conclusion, therefore, not P. And the idea here is that if you have a conditional that P implies Q, but that your conclusion is false, it could not be that your assumption was true. Because if your assumption was true, your conclusion would have to be true as well. So knowing your conclusion is false forces the assumption to be false as well if you have this conditional. If we wanted to, we could go and write out the truth table exactly as we did for modus ponens and we could get that indeed the columns matched and so we would have that this argument form was going to be valid. I'm going to note that, that both modus ponens and modus tollens are referred to as syllogisms. These are examples where you have two different premises, sort of a major premise and a minor premise, and therefore you get a conclusion out of it. So let's see an example of one of these. Here's my argument for it. If I'm the President of the United States, then I'm an American citizen. I am not an American citizen, true fact, I happen to be a Canadian, and therefore I am not the President of the United States. Now, this is not the only way I can prove that I'm not the President of the United States, but it is one argument that is logically valid, and in fact, both of these different conditions are going to be true. You have to be an American citizen to be the President of the United States. I am not an American citizen, therefore it must be that I am not the President of the United States. And indeed, if we come through and try to, to look at our structure here, I'm going to say that, that I am the President of the United States. That's going to be my P here. I am an American citizen. That's going to be the statement Q. And then what I'm doing down here is that I am negating this. I am saying I am not an American citizen and therefore I am getting out of this not being the President of the United States. So I have proven that I am not the President of the United States.